While the fantasy genre typically delves into folklore and derives some of its content from secular and pagan mythology, there is a point and place for fantasy focused on Christian values. J.R.R. Tolkien created Middle-earth and the stories that encompass his world as a type of allegory fraught with the juxtaposition between the things of God and the things of the world. But his friend C.S. Lewis thought he didn't go far enough and created his series The Chronicles of Narnia. Ironically enough, Tolkien actually convinced Lewis, who was a lifelong atheist until their encounter, to convert to Christianity, and the latter author became one of the foremost theologians of the 20th century. Who's to say that can't happen again? I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones. Join me as we jump into the second interview of the 2024 Author Awareness April Marathon. Welcome to The Right Way, where we talk book recommendations, creative writing tips, and this month especially, author interviews. I have another great marathon interview for you, but I have a few announcements before we slide into this week's conversation, starting with Free Comic Book Day and Star Wars Day. Both of those events are coming up in just three weeks from today, and I'm really excited because while there has been some proximity between the two dates in the past, they rarely overlap. Now, I'll be down at DJ's Collectible Shop in downtown Hanford, signing and selling copies of all five books in my ongoing fantasy series, The Archives of Isink Ran. I love getting opportunities to talk with prospective readers as well as catch up with people already getting into the series. Now, if you don't know anything about my series, check out this trailer for book three, Rise of the Shadowkin. He has survived being turned into a vampire. He has defeated an ancient demon above the Three Sands Desert. Now, Asher the Karasur comes upon his greatest challenge yet. A new darkness is virally spreading and it threatens both the living and the undead. It is all tied back to an age-old mystery concerning the identity of Drak Asar, the progenitor of the vampire race. Asher's travels and investigation take him back among the undead in direct conflict with the last remaining scion of Menonias. The stakes have never been higher for the Katasaur, as he hopes to bring about the redemption and the rise of the Shadowkin. It's been a while since I made any announcement about this, well, except for, you know, last week. But I have a free signed poster that I would love to give away to one lucky winner. But I can't do that until I've reached my goal of 200 subscribers on YouTube. Entry to the giveaway is absolutely 100% guaranteed free. Now once you've registered down in the link in the video description, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll announce a winner when I hit that magic number of 200 subscribers. Lastly, I want to let you guys know about my writing workshops that I have coming up through the late spring and going into the summer. I have signed up to begin writing workshops at the Hanford branch of the Kings County Library once again. Now because of the information coming to me late and my lack of availability through the month of April, I have requested that I not start anything until the month of May. I have provided the library with two Saturday dates for each of those months uh, with my schedule uh, between May, June, and July. And I'm waiting to hear back which week in all three of those months uh, that I'll be presenting. And as soon as I get that approval, and I get that information, you guys will know it as well. It is entirely possible that I will have the information prior to the airing of this episode, but I want you guys to be in the know. Because, I, you know, I love you guys. Now, let's kick off this awesome interview.
This week, I get to interview an author from my hometown. I connected with Caitlin through Instagram a little more than a year ago when I learned that she would be a vendor at one of the meet and greets the Hanford Library holds. I was eager to get her slated for the marathon because I thought this would be a really amazing time to help her promote her work. I hope that you enjoy this second interview of Author Awareness April. Hi, Caitlin. Thanks for joining me on the show. Please tell me about your work and what it is that you write. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I write YA Christian fiction, and I decided I wanted to do that when I was about 17 years old, when I felt like I couldn't find books that were written for Christian teenagers, and I decided that was something I wanted to change. Basically, essentially, you wrote them for yourself. Yeah, for the most part, and for those who are coming up behind me. Um, There was, I don't know, I've always loved reading and always found myself in characters. And there was this period of time in my teens when it just felt like I couldn't relate to the characters as well anymore. They, They were written for the average American teenager, and I just didn't feel like I fit that mold anymore. And so I was feeling very lonely and very much trying to figure out what God had for me to do for the rest of my life. And then it just all of a sudden seemed to click. I, someone at a camp had written a book for Christian teenagers, and I said, I want to do the same thing. That's pretty cool. So now, as I understand, there's some fantasy elements to your story. Is that correct? Yes. So I do have. I do consider mine fantasy. Um, the first, the, the first series I worked on more than conquerors is in a fictional world. And eventually in some of the later books, I plan to have, um, like dragons and unicorns. Cause technically those things are listed in the Bible as being real. So I'm like, I don't consider that too fantastical, but I think that also would qualify it as that. How much of a biblical influence is there in your writing? How, how allegory heavy is it? Like, is it, are we talking like Narnia or are we talking uh, Tolkien? So I have two different series uh, right now. And so the More Than Conqueror series really isn't that allegorical at all. Um, the Bible is listed. There will be Bible verses listed. The only thing that's a little different is that there is a uh, fictional religion that takes the Bible out of context. And I didn't want to like point fingers at any religion in our world t- today. So I made up a religion that does that. So that's the only thing that's a little fake. Now the new series that just came out over Christmas, that one is extremely allegorical. I, I describe it as Narnia meets the Nutcracker. Okay. Gotcha. That's really cool. Uh, were there other influences that you've had or other inspirations that you've had as a writer? Oh, I, I feel like every book I read, uh, influences my writing in some way. Um, I was talking to my lit teacher from college and letting her know that a lot of what she taught me from the classics, I now see myself putting in a lot of the uh, hidden imagery and things like that. Um, Mm -hmm. I put inside my stories and and take inspiration from basically the greats. Uh, So what has been one of the, the hardest parts or the biggest challenges in the creation of your work? I think overcoming a lot of the, um, what do they call it? The self-doubt, the, the um, worrying about all of that, because for years, all of my work sat on the shelf as I waited um, to have someone validate my work, you know, a publisher, an agent to say, yes, go ahead and stuff. And for years, all of that was put on the back burner as I did what everyone else told me to do as far as careers and family and everything else that I was supposed to be doing. And I kind of got to a point where I was like, I'm tired of letting someone else tell me yes. And once I got over that, Mm -hmm. it just, everything has been going, 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 going. And so when I started self-publishing everything, it just felt like it was all downhill in, in a good way where like a roller coaster sort of thing. Once I overcame that, it feels like every time I write something, it gets faster and faster and faster. If you could give any advice to other would-be authors out there, because I mean, you you've gone through the paces, you've self-published, you've you've tried putting yourself out there uh, in the traditional publishing style. If there is any advice you could give to other authors out there, what would you say to them? I think just start. I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm like, I wish I had started sooner. 
And uh, I just let fear and a lot of other people tell me I couldn't do it for a very long time. And I just wish I'd gotten started. And these days, it's so much easier to even do a whole lot of that, like the um, it, like getting through Kindle and stuff. I'm like, you could get started basically for free by mm -hmm. just publishing on Kindle and making your own cover and doing due diligence with editing and making sure it's perfect before going up. And then you don't have to spend any money. You could just start making revenue and then save up to where you can start printing out books. It's it's just there really isn't an excuse anymore to say, oh, I can't be an author. I'm like, you can. You just might have to get a little creative to do it. So we're coming up on the last question here, Caitlin. And this is more about you than anything else. How can people get a hold of you? How can they get a hold of your work, uh, buy your books, can make those connections? So I have a website, which is uh, authorcaitlinking.com. And I am on Instagram, Facebook. And I think LinkedIn, as my dad said, I had to be on LinkedIn. So I'm on LinkedIn. He's pretty much the only one that follows me. though. <laughs> um, but on all of those, I'm author Caitlin King. And um, I'm very active on all of those. Uh, okay, not LinkedIn as much because I'm still figuring that one out. <laughs> uh, but I'm on all of those. I have a Patreon, um, which I have four different tiers on there. I have a basic um, book club where I just talk about what books I'm reading and what books I recommend. Um, I have a fan club for my More Than Conquer series. I have a secrets um, tier where I put up like really behind the scenes stuff that I wouldn't even put on social media um, on there where I get inspiration for some things. A lot of the secrets are on there. And then I actually have a writing class here where I'm trying to teach um, things I've learned along the way. So Patreon's a great place to connect with me. Um, and uh, those that are on there will constantly send me messages and stuff. And I try to get back to all of them. Um, so, yeah, I think that's those are all the places. Oh, and I did start a YouTube channel. I'm I'm not very good on there yet, but I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, and we all we all start slowly at first. Mm hmm. Awesome. Well, Caitlin, thank you very much for being on the show. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. A huge thank you to Caitlin King for being my second guest for Author Awareness April. Now, if you're interested in picking up copies of her work or connecting with her through social media, you can find all of those links down in the video description. If you'd like to see a longer, uncut edition of my conversation with Caitlin, you can do so by becoming a channel supporter by going to patreon.com slash gkjpublishing and subscribing for as little as a dollar per month. Every tier gets access to the uncut interviews, and I think you'll really enjoy the full length of that conversation. Hey, thanks for watching. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications on new videos just like this one. I'll be back next week with the third interview for this year's marathon with multi-genre Christian author T.E. Price. I'll see you then.